So uh, I'll leave that in the court of my brother Brabomani to tell us or to tell the chief and his elders the reason why we are here. Greetings are uh, Nana um, and elders. I'm Greetings are uh, Nana and elders. Uh, we are here to reconnect to our ancestral roots, to be a part of a reconnection of Africans that were stolen from the African continent. And now in this modern day time, we want to be reconnect to our roots to where we can come together as a people and build a future for our children on the African continent and around the entire African world. But, uh, so Marcus Garvey always talk about uh, Africa for the Africans, for those at home here on the African continent and those abroad in the African diaspora. And someone like myself, I was born in uh, Kingston, Jamaica, lived in America and reconnecting to you know, my favorite country in the world and favorite country in Africa, uh, Ghana. Uh, Ghana really connects people like myself that are from the Caribbean to, the, to, to the, our, our authentic roots. And for those of us in America that have studied the, the roots and the culture, we all find a common ground of us wanting to come back and build what we need to build, black ownership. Because sometimes the story is not told correctly as far as the Africans in the diaspora. Um, sometimes we look at some level of privilege, uh, but we as a people, whether we're on the African continent or in the diaspora, have our common struggle so we're looking to you know, build corporate economics, which is us putting our resources together and figuring out our own problems as a people without other nations or race of people like uh, the Caucasians in Europe or the Asians in different parts of the world. So we're here to build true black unity and black power. And we're here to learn and open ourselves to the culture of our wonderful new community in Jahadzi. <coughs> And we have some members that are part of our phase one and then others that are open and want to learn. So new people get a chance to see what we built from last December, one year ago, when we first met and gave our commitment that we would love to be a part of this beautiful grown community. And so we're here to open to the roots and the culture. And we want to also find out what we can do to be a better part of this community. Thank you. Uh, I would like to speak through my linguists and then through Abaka, who is also a linguist to you. <laughs> In the Bible, there is a story of a political son. In this case, it's not what was captured in the Bible as a political son. In that political son, he has a very good home. He left. Without the, the father's will. But even when he came back, the father had to select the biggest cow and the cow that has all the interest or love to it. And they care for that for the castle. In your case, you are not. And not and never at that that happened in the Bible. In your case, it's as a result of forced migration to work somewhere. They have found that yes, the benefit we want your body. So you don't need to again. So they start to trouble you. It's like 
You have a woman, you want to divorce. The woman hasn't done anything wrong. So you try to create a situation for the woman herself to live. You are from Africa. You are in Africa and you are from Jahadim. I wish all the African citizens who were taken away by the white to go and do the sugarcane farming and develop their country will come back and leave them and give them just five years. They will come here and beg us. They thought what they needed, they have got it. That is why they are behaving like an ostrich. When he is so satisfied food, he just threw the legs and ate people. For me, when I heard of your homecoming, initiated by the president of Ghana, Nana Ekufuado, I was so glad. And I was so glad that he took a tourist minister who initiated such a policy. And people are coming. It is up to us to accommodate you and make you happy in Ghana and the whole Africa. Now that you have come, Ghana is for you, Jad is for you. Some of your people came before you arrived today. They wanted to even start putting up their houses. I was expecting that they do it. Yes, we have policies in putting up houses. But I'm the custodian of Jahadi land. I can decide what my land should be used for. That is why if president wants to use my land for even social projects, he has to consult me. They say compulsory acquisition. Compulsory acquisition, you must compensate me. So for me, being a custodian of this very land and being the chief of this town, it is my right to ensure what I will do to develop my place without allowing any hindrances, interference. If you want to do so, you must sit me down and convince me why you want to do that. So that's land given to you. Once I have appended my signature, it's for you. If you go and put up a house, that you will not have an heir, you have made it. The town and country planning, they only come to see that where you are putting your house is not a swampy area. Mm -hmm. So you yourself, you can't see it. That is a swampy area. And then today themselves, they're supposed to have done layout and have a layout copy in their office. So when they are in the office, they will read to see that the layout, this place, is here mark for market. This place is here mark for this. This place is a swampy area. Have they done it? No. So, how can you check me what to put and what to do? That is why I told Abaka that today, if you go and do the saw cutting, today people must start building. If you have your money, build your house. You want to pay me that you are paying so much money at the hotels. Look at some of them came so much early and they are in the hotels paying money. <coughs> so much money. And I told them, ah, so those monies, if they are using to put that there, it's better. So today, the moment they are doing the soccer cutting, put up your house. Whoever doesn't understand should come to me. I'm telling you some story. Very funny. And I know 
<laughs> if they are men like me, <laughs> when you tell them that I say you should put out, they won't come. They will not, they will not even call me. I was putting out some house in Jaishen, then people there called me that uh, they saw a car from this assembly, they come there and then they said uh, the financial they are doing, they should stop. And then they said, Nana, yeah, they, he is doing it. So then take my number, you give it to him to call me. So I called him and said, Nana, where is your family? I said, who dare you to ask me this? I said, you. <laughs> when I put down that house and I want to do the extension, where were you? That office. Are you sure you're doing the right thing? He ran away from my face. My brothers and sisters, you are my brothers and sisters. You are coming to stay here. Have trust in me. Today, from today, Bomani, allow them to do their work. Allow them to put up their houses. Okay? They should put up the house and stay there. If you have any problem, call on me. Even if it's a plaster house, that we should go. We'll go there. We are all human beings and we understand what to do and what not to do. And people must do the right thing before they ask others to do what they're supposed to do. Anyway, I won't expose Ghana, I won't expose Africa, but that is my policy. That once I've given you the land, go and put up your house and stay there. When you are putting up your house, make sure that your putting up your house will not interfere with somebody's rights and freedom. So that you put up your house here, then there's no space. That can obtain. That is wrong. Now, you know very well that uh, when you put up your house here and there's a flood, the water must pass through the place, then you have block it. That it will flood the whole area. Why do you do that? And I know with Bomani, even you wouldn't be thinking of doing that because I've seen the plan you have done, and there's a lot of spaces and a lot of avenues where human beings can stay peacefully. So go ahead and put up your house. Now, when it comes to the registration of the land, it is probably your own benefit to do the registration, right? If you haven't done it, it doesn't mean you don't have property. In law, the registration of land is not an ultimate grounds of ownership of land, right? But it is sometimes a grounds of exposing yourself to everybody who wants to come to that land that it is yours. Do you, you understand what I'm saying? Yes, it means that you are making a publication. Like you go and marry a woman, then you go to uh, uh, publishing, well, they say that you do gazetting, you publish, so the whole world know that this woman is my wife. But it doesn't mean that Fine, I can go for somebody's wife and go and gazette. Does it mean it's my wife? So gazetting, uh, registering the land is for your benefit to ensure that the whole world, if you go to everywhere, you go to the Google, you can see that it's for Kokumen. But it doesn't make you an ownership because as a chief, as I am, if you go and do that register without my knowledge, and then the whole world see that Bomani has visited this land or has registered this land is for him. And I get to know later. I will sue Bomani, sue the last commission, and prove with history, evidence, history, that my ancestors' land. I didn't know Bomani has taken the land from me. And he didn't tell me, and he has come to you land for me, you have registered it. So court, take my land for me. They will ask you that the land has moved. Then they will add that the gizel you have done should be reversed. So which means that acquisition of land is not by registration, it's by ownership. 
So if you are not an owner and you give the land, then you go and register and say, Oh, my, I've gone to register in the land commission. Land commission has no land. <laughs> they don't own any land. It's the owner of the land who owns the land. <laughs> they are only managing, administrating, making sure that there will be conflict. And for them to, there's a guideline for them to follow. Sometimes people go and register without the knowledge of the owner, and then it is reversed. Look at Trazaco, is it Trazaco or this in the Valley Estate? Valley View. Valley View. Is it Valley Estate? Is it Trazaco Valley Estate or Trazaco Valley Estate? Yes. You heard it? The court has ordered that the people who gave the land to them are not the owners, so it's going to the other owner. Look at the big people who are saying that. I'm alleged in being president, Kufu and those things are all saying that. So what is going to happen? Fine. They have gone to register from the land commissioner. So what is going to happen? That is why I'm telling you that. Allow your people to put up their houses. If I'm not an owner, they should take me to court. But I'm an owner. Land commission is only going to recognize you to the whole world that you own this land. What I'm giving it to you, go and build your houses. I've done so well for telling you this. I'm so generous. <coughs> so go and put up your house and stay there. There's my tall building. Go to land commission if they have records there. Look. Go to that estate they have put up there. I feel you marking the NPs estate. There's no records in that land commission. So why should we allow this hindrances to our development and our brothers and sisters who are Africans and that Trump is disturbing them and we want them to come back. So for money, yes. take heart with your people, allow them to build their houses. If anything, whether there is assembly or the MP or the minister, should come to my palace and ask me why. Then I will teach him what he's supposed to do. So today, if I go and do the sword cutting, it is open for you people to put up your house. Within three weeks, you print your house, go and sit there. <laughs> I must also state that I think uh, we've asked uh, Lapo to do certain work. Lapo has done so well, especially with Abakan. Most often, I um, probably might have delayed certain moves because uh, I'm not staying around. So they will call me how to move and come. By the time I'll come, I'll look for them, do certain things and go back. I must state, category that, you must exercise patience for these two gentlemen. Because they have sacrificed, myself, I've really sacrificed, because I need not involve in even doing such a company registration. I have my company myself. I rented a company myself before entering into the judicial service. I'm not using the company because I'm not supposed to work outside the judicial service. If I'm a company, it's a developer, and then there is a case affecting that company, <laughs> and I'm a judge. What, what do you think? Probably my case is good. It will go to another judge. The judge will say my case is good, but they say, oh, they are brothers. They know themselves. So we need not to be doing anything aside the work as a judiciary. So for that, my company, I'm not using it. It is just there. Now for this one, I'm foreseeing the prospects of what you are coming to do. Probably with that company, you'll be able to, you know, import certain material that would be necessary for certain <coughs> project you want to put up, investment you want to do here and there. 
and I have sacrificed. And when it comes to terms of defending myself, I know God will defend me. Unfortunately, the first document that came, we did everything, it went. Later, later, the institution, which is the Director General, the Register General, changed the whole uh, policy of doing the company registration. So they printed a new form altogether. We were just waiting for it. So we didn't know. It was later the lawyer get to know. They went, they said, no. He was even going to check whether it is done. They said, no, we, we have discussed whatever you brought. Now it's a new thing. Oh, then they have to give you the new document. So they brought the document again to me. And I signed. But before then, they had already signed and they were waiting for me. So the, when I sent, I sent it to Accra to give it to the lawyer myself. Then he also said, which means that the expected time to do the reason cannot be made. made. Now, whatever it is, it will be done. So there's a need for everybody to answer patients. It will be done. After doing so, I have talked to certain people. In fact, today you are coming. I decided to bring certain people here to talk to you, but I haven't discussed with Bomani and Abakan, so I stop it. Like the divisional commander of police, like the immigration officer, and then the commercial bank manager of Winneba. I met them, discussed. You are coming to stay with me, with them. And I told them they are technical men to come and brief you how you can stay peacefully so that you'll be seen everywhere as a Ghanaian. I must be frank with you that I have you people in heart. The immigration officers, probably with me, telling them may give you a stay for a certain period so that you can have set access to certain things in the country without any problem. Now, I know when you come, because every person, when you move, even if I move to America now, I'm a stranger, I wouldn't know certain things. So as we have come, the same thing. And the moment they see you as a stranger in any community, the bad not among the community decide to think evil around you. Is that not it? Yeah. So it is my duty to ensure that you are protected. So I decided that you open accounts at the commercial bank. So I, I spoke to the commercial bank manager. You can open account in dollars and open account in cities so that you don't put so much money on you. You are staying in the hotels and other places so that your money will be there. You can cash your money everywhere. Even when you travel back, you can still cash your money. And he was so happy. And I told him that I wish he would be meeting you and then explain, because I'm not an accountant, explain how they go about doing all those things. Then I also decided to invite the immigration officer to also come to also speak to you so that he also directs you how to go about it to get citizenship. Whether you go for citizenship in Ghana or you have your dual citizenship, so that you can be staying here, you can go so you have your dual citizenship. And then how you can manage yourself so that you can be part of anything that you want to do as a Ghanaian. I did all those things, but unfortunately I didn't discuss with Abaka. So when you were coming, there was no need to invite them to come. As for the commander, I was inviting him so that you speak certain security advices and then for him knowing you are here and whatever it is, so that 
even if somebody insults you or something happens, you go there, he knows that Nanaja had a, spoke to me and I went and met them and that kind of thing. So that you'll be more secure. It is now uh, and my responsibility to ensure that you are secure. Ghana, as like other countries, Ghana is a peaceful country. You go to other countries, it's not like that. But it doesn't mean that if it is peaceful, then you should take, uh, what do you call it, uh, you should just a little bit peaceful, so you will take precautions. You must take precautions because in every sweet granite, there is a bad granite where you can destroy the whole granite. So you are warmly welcome to Jahaze. I wait that wherever you go, you say that you are from Jahaze, but not Ghana. <laughs> <laughs> because when you say you are from Ghana, then you are missing my name. Say I'm from Jahaze. And then all your cars make it Jahaze. So that when you are missing and they find you, they will come to Jahaze. And then they will say that you are from Jahaze. Because I have my card, which is on it, Jahaze. So as you have come to stay me, with me, whatever card you are going to make sure that Jahaze appears on your card. So that when we are looking for you, or somebody is looking for you, they come to Jahaze and we can find you. Bomani, as a leader of your group, who have come to stay here, must also make his card Jahaze. Yeah. So that he will be traced when they are looking for you. Is that not it? <laughs> so you are warmly welcome. Thank you. I wish that last year we met and this year we have met. I wouldn't like us to meet next year like this again. Next year that we'll be meeting, then it is a meeting that I'm going to visit you in your houses. So, Bomani. Yes, sir, no, no. I wish you promised me that next year this time I will come and visit you in your houses. That is definitely the plan. So you are warmly welcome. Thank you. I Thank also you. want to express our gratitude on behalf of my community and my elders to, first of all, Bomani and Leonard and uh, uh, Benny's uh, uh, Carmen. Comrade, uh, Carmen. Yes, the Leonard family. Yes. The last year that you came here, they left. I had no knowledge of anything. And nobody told me that they want to help the community. Later, Abaka came to me that Leonard and the family want to have the government to have a facility, a gent for the community and for any visitor who comes around. But I bow my head down because I might be shaved. But we're not seeing that that is very needful. But I was happy that the family have identified the problem I knew and they want to help that problem to be resolved. Lord and behold, within the year as we were saying here, that within the year, that problem has been resolved and it's real life. That is the toilet facility there. I know Bumani has a lot of things for the community and not him alone, all of you. Some people have consulted me to put up uh, certain industries, projects, which will employ people here and there. 
I'm ready and ever ready to give land. I will never allow having land to put up industry, project, uh, all those things to be a hindrance at all. If you go around to say that because I'm not getting land, that's why I couldn't put up a project which were private, then you haven't come to me. I'm ever ready to ensure that as we come to stay, whatever project you have in mind, whatever mission you have in mind, I'm going to support you to have it done. Because even the Rafiki orphanage, they are to put up to help the orphans. I gave that 20 acre land to them free of charge. They brought money to buy. I gave them free of charge. So for me, if I'm not dead and you want to put up a project that will employ people, that will give ease to the life of people, and you don't come to me, then you will tell people that I'm looking for land to put up the project. I didn't get. It's number two. If you come to me, we'll get the land and put up the project. So I'm grateful to Leonard and family. From here, we shall all go there. Have a look at the artifacts. Commission it for use. Then I'm sure Abaka have also told you where we we'll go after here because he told me we we'll go to Rafiki. Then from there we we'll go to your land. That is your house. Then you go there and have a look at the place. It's a very nice area. Then we we'll go there. I'll go with you. And the car sort. And then from there, from today, if you have a contract to put up your heart for you, go ahead. Thank you very much.